I would like to welcome everyone to the Henry County Zoning Board meeting, March 10th, 2016. This meeting is being televised live on channel 180 and AT&T UVerse, channel 99, and will rebroadcast re every Thursday at 7 p.m., Saturday at 12.30 p.m., and is available by video on demand on the county website. Now would be a good time to turn off your cell phones. If you wish to speak, you need to fill out a public hearing speaking card. We will allot 10 minutes for those speaking in favor of a case and 10 minutes for those speaking in opposition of a case. If a person is wishing to speak, they, shall, they all shall be allotted that one 10 minutes. You will be asked to address the board if you turn and speak to the audience, we will assume that you have completed your uh, statements. At this time, we will have the invocation and pledge by Mr. Bailey. Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this day and this time and this opportunity to meet to discuss the affairs of the county. Father, we ask you to give us wisdom and guidance in all we discuss tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, individuals, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> this meeting is now called to order. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? I have a motion to approve. Do you have a second? I second. Okay. Do you have a motion to approve the minutes? I have a motion. Do we have a second? All in favor? Are there any staff comments? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, there are a couple of things. Item or case number CU-15-16, Verizon Wireless, Troutman Sanders, LLP of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, they formally withdrew their application. So that item is no longer on tonight's agenda and has been stricken from the agenda. So instead of seven items, there will be six tonight. And uh, number the second um, comment that staff would like to make is formally welcome the city of Stockbridge Zone Advisory Board appointee, Ms. Quinesha Robinson-Green. If you all will help me welcome her. Welcome, Ms. Green. <laughs> Dante, for the record, I'd like to go back and make a motion to approve the agenda again and get a vote on it. I didn't get a vote on that one. I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion. Okay, we have a motion. A second. All in favor? Motion carries. We're, got, we're now moving to the agenda. Here the first case, please. Case number RZ-15-22-S, Narayan Patel of Stockbridge, Georgia, requests a rezoning from C1 Neighborhood Commercial to C3 Highway Commercial for the property located on at 1024 Highway 138 in Land Lot 55 of the 12th District. The property consists of 2.91 plus or minus acres, and the request is for a hotel and restaurant development. It is located in the city of Stockbridge and will be presented by Mr. Stacy Jordan. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Board members. The property before you tonight is located on Highway 138 West, 
just to the side of the Coles department store and also beside the bottle shop there on Highway 138 West across from the intersection with North Mill Road. The future land use map, which is the City of Stockbridge policy guide for land use decisions, indicates the property in the red color, which stands for commercial and services. And so it supports the applicant's request for a commercial zoning district. The site plan, which is part of your exhibits, shows that the request is for a hotel and also a restaurant. And the city of Stockbridge code requires that a hotel be placed in a C3 zoning district. The staff has recommended approval of the applicant's request with two conditions. The first condition allowing the city the latitude of requiring some or all of the provisions of the Clayton County Overlay District, which runs along Highway 138 West. And number two, to require a multi-use path to be placed along the sanitary sewer easement, which runs along the property line, um, based upon the approval of the Clayton County Water Authority. And I'd be pleased to answer any questions. Any questions from the board? No questions? Okay. At this time, we'd like the applicant to come forward. Please state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, good evening, members of the board. My name is Steve Moore with Moore Bass Consulting, 1350 Keys Ferry Court, McDonough, Georgia. Okay. I'm here tonight representing Manish, Inc. Uh, in the rezoning of this property. Um, as Stacy mentioned, the subject property is 2.9 acres uh, at 1024 Highway 138 and is in the city of Stockbridge. Um, west of 75, right in front of the Cole Shopping Center. Uh, our request for C3 uh, is to support the development and construction of a hotel site. Uh, in addition, the site will include a restaurant, which is, as Stacy mentioned, uh, currently allow, under, allowed under the current zoning, but the hotel would require the C3. Um, slightly better view of the site plan. But as you can see, uh, the site easily fits, uh, the, the plan easily fits within the site boundaries. Um, we have intentionally placed all of the proposed improvements outside of any kind of buffers. As you can see, Reeves Creek is along our uh, southern boundary. So we've uh, stayed outside of all of those buffers. We provide code compliant parking uh, for both uses. We uh, have recently received uh, approval from Georgia Department of Transportation for our driveway cut onto Highway 138. Um, and uh, so we feel like it's a, a very a very good use for the property my client owns uh, and has developed several hotels in Henry County and Clayton County and other counties and owns several tracts of land still in Henry County so is familiar with this area feels like it is a good fit and that there's a demand in this area uh, we have read uh, staff's report and their recommendations. We've also been in consult with the City of Stockbridge, uh, with Dale Hall at the City of Stockbridge, and have discussed those conditions as well and feel like we can come to an agreement on those. And uh, with that, we respectfully request your uh, approval of our application, and I'm here to answer any other, any other questions you might have. Okay. Does the board have any additional questions for the applicant? Okay. I just have one question. Uh, what size hotel do we plan to or have they is that in the in the plans as of now uh, it size? hasn't been hundred percent finalized but I do have a picture of what the hotel is intended to, to be but it will be a uh, a national chain type uh, hotel but you know could be as many as four stories um, and the uh, exact shape and number of rooms is going to be determined as the process moves forward but it will be something in this along this lines okay thank you yes sir. okay you may be seated at this time we would like we like to allot 10 minutes for those that would like to speak in favor of the case
Anyone like to speak in favor of this case? If not, we'd like to allot 10 minutes for anyone that would like to speak in opposition of the case. If we have no one coming forward, will the applicant come forward, please? Does the board have any additional questions for the applicant? If not, you may be seated, sir. Okay, at this time, we'd like to call the case. Case number RZ-15-22-S, dash 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 Narayan Patel of Stockbridge, Georgia, request to rezone from C1 Neighborhood Commercial to C3 Highway Commercial for a property located at 1024 Highway 138 in land lot 55 of the 12th district. The property consists of 2.91 plus or minus acres and the request is for a hotel and restaurant development located in the city of Stockbridge and was presented by Mr. Stacy Jordan. Okay, you heard the case. Do we have a motion? I make a motion to recommend approval with the two conditions as recommended by staff. Okay, we have a motion of approval. Do we have a second? Second. I have a second by Mr. Bailey. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. Okay. Okay, we'd like to call the second case, please. Case number RZ-16-01, Ming Trust Trustee, Quinn Ming of McDonough, Georgia, requests a rezoning from R3 single family residence to RA residential agriculture for property located on the west side of Springdale Drive and south of Miller's Mill Road and land lot 30 of the 11th district. The property consists of 40.70 plus or minus acres and the request is for a rezoning and is located in Commission District 4 and will be presented by Mrs. Adrian Center. Good evening, <coughs> Vice Chairman and members of the board. Um, the property is located along the west side of Springdale Drive and south of Miller's Mill Road and the applicant is requesting to change the existing zoning of R3 to its original zoning of RA. The property was rezoned as part of a larger 96.8 track from RA to R2 on sewer with a conditional use for a conservation subdivision and was granted that rezoning on January 16th of 2007. When the ULDC was adopted in 2009, all R2 zone properties on sewer the zoning was changed and it was changed to the R3 zoning designation. The applicant is requesting the property to be reverted back to the original zoning classification per section 12.00.03, which defines the expiration of approval for rezoning amendments to the zoning map as follows. After an approval has been granted for an amendment to the official zoning map to create or extend any zoning district, the applicant agent or property owner has 18 months in which to make substantial progress in developing the property. Substantial progress shall mean the point of construction at which time the first inspection is carried out. If no substantial construction or alteration of the property or other affirmative action to develop the property has occurred within those 18 months of granting the, an, an application for rezoning, the Zoning Advisory Board may review the situation, report its findings with recommendations to the Board of Commissioners, who may, at a public hearing, change the zoning category to its prior or other appropriate zoning district classification. The requested rezoning or a zoning classification is not in compliance with the land use plan and density However, reversion of the zoning would allow the property to still be developed as a resi residential development and maintain the character of the surrounding area as rural. Uh, planning staff has recommended approval that the request um, for the property be reverted back to the RA zoning designation. And at this time, I can answer any questions you may have. Okay. Does the board have any questions? If not, we'd like the applicant to come forward. Will you state your name and address for the record, please? Good evening. Good evening. My name is Wanda Moore, and I'm with Falcon Design Consultants, and we're at 235 um, uh, Corporate Center Drive in Stockbridge, Georgia. And I'm here to represent or a answer any questions you guys might have on this uh, unprecedented um, down zoning 
that my client is asking um, for his property. Okay. Does the board have any questions for that? I just have one question, Ms. Moore. Uh, any particular reason why they're requesting to downgrade it? Uh, the property, as uh, staff had indicated, has been rezoned for quite a while. And um, reversion back to the original uh, zoning district is, uh, requires a public hearing. And so since there's been no substantial interest in the property to be developed um, as an R3 subdivision, the property owner is requesting it to be reverted back to the original zoning. Okay. Any additional questions? You may be seated. At this time, we'll allow 10 minutes for anyone that would like to speak in favor of this case. If no one is coming up, we'd like to allow 10 minutes for anyone speaking in opposition of it. Will the applicant come forward, please? Does the board have any additional questions for the applicant? Okay. Well, you may be seated. If you'd like to call the case, please. Case number RZ-16-01, Ming Trust, Trustee Quinn Ming of McDonough, Georgia, request a rezoning from R3 single family residence to RA, residential agricultural, for the property located on the west side of Springdale Drive and south of Mills Mill Road in land lot 30 of the 11th district. The property consists of 40.70 plus or minus acres and the request is for a rezoning. It is located in Commission District 4 and was presented by Ms. Adrian Center. Okay. You've heard the case. Do we have a motion? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to approve the, the zoning reversion from R3 to RA uh, Residential Agricultural. <coughs> Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. Move to case number three, please. Case number RZ-16-02, Brave Friends LLC of McDonough, Georgia, request a rezoning from RA, residential agricultural, to R3, single family residence for a property located at 28 Crumbly Road in land lot seven of the 7th District. The property consists of 35.16 plus or minus acres, and the request is for a single family residential development and is located in Commission District 4 and will be presented by Ms. Josephine Medina. Uh, good evening, Mr. Vice Chairman and members of the board. Good evening. In the case that I'm presenting today, the applicant's requesting for a rezoning from RA to R3 uh, for a residential subdivision. Um, under the R3 zoning district, uh, it calls for a minimum of 18,000 square feet lots. Um, and the property, as can be shown on the projector, consists of 35.31 plus or minus acres. Uh, and it's located on uh, Crumbly Road um, to the east of 155. Um, so as the site plan shows, the proposed amount of lots is um, 53 lots within the 35.31 acres, um, which would be a net density of 1.7 uh, dwellings per unit, per acre. Um, in addition to that, um, just to clarify, um, the whole portion of the property is not being asked to be rezoned, but as you can see um, by the zoning boundaries shown, um, there are um, about 4.11 acres that are to be remain um, what they currently are zoned, um, and the, the applicant wishes to have them, at least the north, northern portion, remain um, RA. Um, uh, and I guess y you could ask him if what the f what the other plans are. Um, he had indicated that he might try to make that um, some type of office or commercial um, in the future if this was uh, rezoned. Uh, 
Um, now, if we look at the surrounding zonings of the property, um, it, is surround, it is to the east. Um, we have what is the East Lake Estates, which is R3. Um, and then to the north and west, um, mainly commercial uh, property. Um, to the south is residential as well as um, East, the East Lake uh, Elementary School. The property itself is located within what we refer to as the Union Grove School Node Activity Zone. Um, so if you, which would be located, what you can see in page three of your report. Um, so the blue, Um, indicates the locations of the schools, um, and I guess it's kind of hard to see. Um, but that is the location of the property itself um, in, in regards to the whole activity uh, center itself. So as mentioned in our comprehensive plan, and as well as reiterated um, within our ULDC, um, what our main activity center goal typology for, this, for the school nodes is for three dwelling units per acre for the entire activity center, uh, as well as 1,500 dwelling units. Um, as, and 50% of the whole activity center to be residential. Right now what we have currently is 136 houses uh, and 0 0.36 uh, dwelling units per acre uh, density, uh, which means that the current node is deficient 1,400 houses um, and also deficient in the amount of, of acreage that is required in terms of density. Um, and this is just to sh um, show the surrounding subdivisions that exist. Uh, as mentioned before, um, just to the east of the property, there is an existing um, R3 subdivision, which has an entrance through East Lake Road. Due to the ULDC and um, comp plan, um, um, request what we should follow um, in terms of policy for the activity center, in terms of the school node, staff recommends approval and um, recommends the following 10. Hmm? Does the board have any questions for staff? If not, we'd like the applicant to come forward. Please state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, thanks, Josephine. I'm Alpesh Patel. Address 124 Glen Eagle Way, McDonough, Georgia. And as uh, Ms. Uh, Josephine pro uh, mentioned, our proposal is a uh, upscale uh, kind of low compared to neighborhood, kind of low density, upscale neighborhood subdivision. In the proposal, as she mentioned, it is a, uh, in out of 35 acre. Uh, the proposal mentioned 53 lots, but uh, exclu excluding uh, out of 53, there will be few lots utilizing for the amenity center, clubhouse, uh, tennis court, uh, uh, the swimming pool, detention pond. So it may use up few few lot, and density will be even even less dense. Uh, 
uh, as she mentioned, the neighborhood uh, area, uh, east, uh, east side estate, uh, has the similar kind of uh, uh, project which is just finished last year. Uh, they have the very minimal use of the, uh, the road compared to what we are uh, proposing, which is a good, uh, uh, good cul-de-sac, good uh, uh, widened road. Plus, what she was mentioning about the front road, front uh, 2.5 acre, which is down the road looking at the commercial side, we are more positively thinking about the medical offices, uh, more like a neighborhood or the C1 neighborhood commercial, rather than any retail shop or, or something like that. Uh, just because we do not have the concrete plan about how we're gonna use it, whether that going to use the complete four acre on that, or whether we're gonna use the two, like a school daycare or the uh, the veterinary hospital or uh, they have the veterinary hospital close by or the church or the some sort of the society service based commercial we have not put uh, that commercial lot in the proposal uh, as of now uh, going back to the subdivision side uh, it, it it mostly going to be the similar to the east lake uh, uh, estate very well it will be larger larger home price wise it uh, it will be way higher than them uh, the amenities plus uh, all all the brick and up, upgrade the size wise each house will be less than not less than 3500 uh, above the surface so uh, excluding a basement i'm talking about so uh, it will be larger, uh, so at least three, three, uh, 3,500 to 4,000 square feet about the, about the surface house. What else? And the estimates and density wise, it's 1.7, but it will be even less dense after we uh, exclude all those amenities and, and, and detention area. And uh, not, uh, completely decided because we have one single entry very well or very easily it will be the gated community okay so does the board have any questions for that yes, I have one. Uh, is this the only zoning district that you have considered for this property uh, let me repeat, I think question is, well, is this is, uh, Okay, you're requesting R3, and, and I, would, I wanted to know if you considered uh, R1 or R2 zoning. Well, uh, we thought about that. R1 will be quite less uh, dense, and even though we are proposing R3, uh, the density-wise, uh, because we want to provide enough amenities to the, to the subdivision uh, uh, people, uh, right now we stick with the R3, but uh, overall, if you look at the uh, plan, it, it is like a close to R2 or so. Okay, thank you. We have another question. Here you have uh, 1,800 square feet set heated space, and you said 4,000. Well, uh, the total, I, I'm not the construction guy, I guess o overall house size above the uh, surface, what we, I have come up in the, in the mind is 3,500. 1,800 square feet house is quite small house. I'm not looking for, for that. Um, yeah, sorry, that was just minimum for the ordinance. I hadn't confirmed what, what, what their intention was for minimum heated, so I didn't put that on there just because I wasn't sure. So it will be all brick uh, around 30, more than 3,500 square feet house because even the East Lake Estate is uh, around 3,000 square feet house uh, plus or minus on that. Anyone else have questions for the applicant? 
what, what you're saying, he could build an 1,800-square-foot house be within... Uh, I right, right. Um, if that's not something that's conditioned, um, the minimum is um, 1,800 square feet for, for R3. I have no intention of building the smaller house, so, I mean, we can... Uh, we can work on that, making it no less than 3,000 or no less than 3,500 square feet. So do you agree to that as a condition? Yeah. Okay. I have a question in reference to the additional land that's there. Do you plan to come back and rezone that, or what's your plan for that? Right. Uh, very well, we was planning to go ahead and do the combined a application but just because we had no concrete plan, number one. And second, there is a, a construction ne next to a, uh, the RA lot uh, that is also a commercial included. So uh, yes, we probably would have to come back to do the rezone, but uh, uh, it is going to be more of the neighborhood service type of business. We will be looking at that. Okay. And you are on the agreement that if, if the board approves, you would be on the agreement of a condition of 3,000 square feet or, or greater? 3,000 square feet or get, greater, yes, sir. Okay. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. You may be seated. At this time, we'd like to allot 10 minutes for those speaking in favor of this case. If no one is coming forward, we'd like to allot 10 minutes for those speaking in opposition of the case. My name is Bill Tony. Okay. Crumley Road coming out into 155 is probably one of the most dangerous roads in that. One second, Mr. Tony. Will you state your address for the record? 1652 Highway 155 North. Thank you. All right. Crumley Road, the way it comes out there with all the traffic, with all the school and everything else coming in there, that's probably one of the most dangerous highways in the world. You don't need to add more insult to injury right there. I, I respectfully ask y'all to decline his zoning because we don't need it right there. I mean, it's just, it's awful. Sometimes it takes five minutes to get out of that, out from the road. And it's dangerous when you're coming down 155. I appreciate it, thank you. Anyone else would like to speak in opposition of this case? Thank you. Uh, my name is Bill Hightower. I live at 1775 Crumley Road. Um, this is kind of emotional because last time I was in this room, I think my brother was sitting in the second or third chair over there. And he was a firm believer in the land use plan. He felt it was a way to solve differences between developers and residences. Um, this is a clearly RA, R1 land use plan. I know there's a lot of discussion about the school zoning and then the school node. I do take issue. Uh, with the staff's plan when it says this is consistent zoning there is no other r3 zoning yes there's a plot on east lake that fo fo is listed as r3 but that is actually an r2 subdivision you are comparing an, uh, an apple and an orange because that was the old r3 not the current r3 so i ask that you consider designing this uh, simply based on it is inconsistent with the uh, surrounding zoning for residences and it is going to set a precedence on Crumley Road that I just simply do not want to see. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak in opposition? Yes, sir. My name is Sandra Phillips. I live at 179 Crumley Road. I'm across the road from all the houses that abut this property. Um, someone has already spoken about the traffic. It's, a, it's, it's horribly dangerous. Uh, and with the addition of these cars, uh, it's, it, I believe it's a fatality waiting to happen. I want to speak briefly about the schools. Um, there's a lot of emphasis in the staff report about the deficit, the so-called deficit of 1,264 housing units that we are suffering from in this school node. I, I won't go into too much detail about that, but I don't believe that is intended to be a requirement at all costs. This number, 1,264, if you use the same calculations 
that are used in the school board report that's included in this staff report use the same calculations for 1,264 more dwelling units within this 933-acre node. That will result in approximately 3,160 more students, which would, if you were just building classrooms for those students, require $37.5 million at today's prices. But what, what it would actually mean is that you would have to have three whole new schools. And that would have to be a different mode, node. And I think you've shot yourself in the foot at that point. So I don't agree with the uh, use of the statistics in the um, activity center typology to justify greater density when the greater density uh, cannot be accommodated by the existing schools. All but the elementary school already have trailers. The elementary school is at capacity. So we're talking about uh, someone who's going to make a profit here, who has to pay for their water, sewer, road improvements, traffic, uh, safety measures. They have to pay for all that, but they don't have to pay for the impact on the school system that would be brought about by this development. And that leaves it to us to pay for that. Um, enough said about that. Um, I believe that the only safe way that the children could get from this community by foot or by bicycle to the schools is across the uh, woods and the floodplain and or creek that separates this property from the school property. And I would like to know if a safe walk was made through there that had a bridge that was safe that was crossing the, the hundred year flood um, stage level, who would be paying for the path once it went off of this property and reached the school property? Um, I, I take issue with the statement at the bottom of page seven on your staff report. It says that the, the um, impact on the adjacent property owners would be minimal because we have all these other uses around us anyway. Um, the reason that we're not surrounded by commercial and high density residential is due in large part to our own efforts as a community in coming before meetings like this and I believe that this statement is akin to saying, you've been injured in the past, and so it shouldn't hurt too much if we injure you some more. I believe we have a precedent on uh, page seven for um, an R1 community that is in a similar situation to Crumbly Road, although it does front on two roads, East Lake and Elliott Road. I believe that we might uh, reasonably consider this as a model, Crown Springs, as a model for development on this property due to our extreme pre-existing traffic conditions. And due to the emotional issues regarding our, 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 the threat to our safety and our our peace and quiet. Um, this uh, report states that our um, that this property is below the threshold for requiring a traffic study, but the reality of the situation, regardless of the size, is that a serious traffic study should be required, uh, not just counting cars, but a, a serious analysis of what's already going on there, because I don't believe there's a person here uh, that's with me today from our neighborhood who couldn't give you a hair-raising personal example of taking their own lives in their hands, trying to get in and out of their own driveways. Not to mention what the previous speaker mentioned about trying to get on, out on 155. Sometimes it's just not doable and you have to come up with a creative alternate. So, I'd just like to mention 
two um, precedents on the commercial property that faces this across Cromley Road. Uh, years ago when this was being rezoned, we were able to appeal to the board because of the geometry of Crumley Road coming off at an angle to 155 to um, place a linear foot limitation on the distance that the curb cut could be down Crumley Road. And that is reflected here on the plan by the location of the driveway into the bank. That's at the limit. And the other condition that was, that was placed as a result of our concerns was that a vegetated buffer would be planted after that along Crumley Road as it approached the existing residential homes. That buffer has never materialized, but that was the reasoning. So because we don't have any transition, any stepping down of the zoning between this super low density residential area that exists here, I would like to refer back to the table on page seven about the Crown Springs subdivision and ask that you recommend uh, a change of the zoning request to R1 with all the same requirements as Crown, um, using that as a model, Crown Springs, um, so that larger lots would be uh, produced along Crumley Road. I would also ask that you um, uh, eliminate this um, out parcel that is clearly intended to be a strip mall or something um, because it is beyond the cemetery. This is a this triangle that you see opposite the bank driveway is a small old family cemetery. At it's not time, labeled. I, I so, have to stop you, man. We're we're at our ten minutes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I have a list of um, okay. zoning conditions, a few zoning conditions that I would like to request. Okay. At this time we'd like to we would like the applicant to come back forward, please. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, uh, Do, does the board have additional questions for the applicant? The board have any questions for the applicant? Okay. If not, we thank you, sir. At this time, we'd like to call the case. Case number RZ-16-02, Brave Friends, LLC of McDonald, Georgia, requests a rezoning from RA, residential agricultural, to R3, single family residence for the property located at 28 Crumbly Road in Landlot 7 of the 7th District. The property consists of 35.16 plus or minus acres, and the request is for a single family residential development, and is located in Commission District 4, and was presented by Ms. Josephine Medina. Yes. You've heard the case. Do we have a motion? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to uh, to, de to deny the request for uh, R R3 zoning. Okay. We have a second. I second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. At this time, we'd like to hear the next case, please. Case number RZ-16-03, Estate. Please, we're yes, going to allot them time sure. to, to go ahead and exit. Okay.
I think we'll be okay now, Dante. You can proceed. Case number RZ-16-03, estate of Dr. Chen and the Marital Trust Trustee Yi Chen of McDonald, Georgia, request a rezoning from a county designated RA, Residential Agricultural, to City of Stockbridge designation PTD, Planned Town Development for property located at 2153 Jodico Road in land lot 77, 78, and 83 of the 6th District. The property consists of 158.65 plus or minus acres, and the request is for a commercial and residential development and is located in Commission District 2 and will be presented by Mr. Stacy Jordan Rudisell. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Board members, the property before you tonight is indicated in your exhibit maps by this green shaded area. It's bounded to the north by Jodico Road. It's bounded to the east by Mount Olive Road, which runs parallel with I-75. Also, Mount Olive Road to the south and the southwest, and Chambers Road to the west. Certain landmarks that you'll see are the church to the west, the shopping center to the north, and the self-storage to the north as well. The zoning of the subject property is RA. RA is indicated by this white shaded area. And again, the subject property is hatched in green. To the south is property that zoned C2, which is showing in the, the bright red. To the north, C2 property as well. Um, city of Stockbridge is indicated in the green to the northeast. The applicant's proposal is a very exciting mixed-use development, as indicated in your exhibit maps. They're proposing a four-lane highway, which will provide access through the middle of the subject property, and it will connect Jodico Road with Mount Olive Road to the south in the vicinity of the church and the cemetery. It's a mixed-use development because they're proposing commercial out parcels to the north. They're proposing big box retail uses in various parts of the plan. In the center, the applicant is proposing a downtown type area with a, a square mixed-use buildings, which will have commercial and retail on the bottom floors with residences above. These two buildings on either side of this green space indicates commercial and retail uses on the ground floor with hotel uses above. There's an amphitheater that would seat approximately 2,500 people on a, a lawn. There's substantial wetlands on the subject property. To the west of these wetlands is a combination apartment complex and townhouse development with particular amenities. The subject property is located within a suburban employment center. This suburban employment center is required to be master planned, and this master plan was accomplished by means of a livable centers initiative study, which was completed several years ago. And the future land use map that's illustrated in your exhibit books is the outcome of this livable centers initiative study. All of these areas that are indicated by purple, including the subject property. That means the purple stands for mixed use development. And also along Mount Olive Road, even though it's difficult to see, there's a little bit of high density that's indicated by the future land use map. If I could refer you to your staff report on page four, under criteria point number three, consistency with the land use plan, there's a discussion about the employment, the suburban employment centers. It says these areas should become vibrant mixed use environments that provide a variety of cultural and recreational opportunities. The high concentrations of employment and housing in these centers, coupled with their locations along I-75, make future transit service very feasible. And I bring that up just to illustrate that the future land use map supports the applicant's request for planned town development, which is the city of Stockbridge 
mixed use type zoning district. And let me just say at this time that the applicant has requested annexation into the city of Stockbridge. And so your, your recommendation tonight will be a recommendation to the Stockbridge City Council. In the staff report, the, um, one thing that I wanted to bring up was that this development met the threshold for a traffic analysis. And this traffic analysis was completed and it was evaluated by the state of Georgia through the Georgia Regional Transportation Authority, also known as GRETA. GRETA submitted a recommendation for approval with certain conditions and staff is recommending that those recommendations be included in a development agreement as part of any approval that the city of Stockbridge may make. Also within the development agreement, staff is recommending uh, talking points, negotiation points regarding what we've referred to as the Western Parallel Connector, which is the four lane road that's been proposed. Also other recommendations of the Livable Center study, also referred to as the LCI study, which would include architectural review and so forth. And finally, negotiations regarding the subject property's location within the limited development area of the Walnut Creek Watershed Protection Area, which drains to the city of McDonough Drinking Water Reservoir. So staff has recommended approval with the one condition with the various aspects that I've mentioned. And I would be pleased to answer any questions. Okay. Does the board have any questions for staff? Yes. When you said that the four lane road is going to dead into uh, Mount, Mount Olive Road, where, Mount Olive, where the cemetery is? What we have understood is that the road would be seamless between Jodico Road and Jonesboro Road, and it would tie into the existing Mount Olive Road as it travels south from the church and the cemetery down past the McDonough Christian Church and end at Jonesboro Road beside Henry Town Center. Any additional questions? I have a question for staff. Now, Stacy, does this rezoning stay with the property even if it's not annexed into the city of Stockbridge? No, sir. Okay. There, they, the applicant has requested a zoning district that is particular to the city of Stockbridge. Okay. The county does not have a planned town development zoning district. Okay. So if it's not annexed into the city of Stockbridge, does, is it required that he has a rezoning for the county? And I would refer to the, the plan, planning and zoning director. In the event that this, this property is not annexed into the city of Stockbridge, then what would need to happen is for the applicant, uh, along with staff's direction, to, is to follow the Georgia zoning procedures law, which will require an application uh, to the county to request the county designation for mixed use, which in this case would be MU. Um, there will also need to be some type of formal withdrawal from the city of Stockbridge in order to, um, for the county to proceed with any new application for rezoning with the county's designated mixed use uh, zoning district. Okay. And just one other quick question. What kind of time frame are you looking at in terms of that? Uh, it would depend on when, if and when they submit their application for rezoning and by what deadline. Um, at that point, if, if we are not given directive by the Board of Commissioners to expedite, then it would just fall to the next Zoning Advisory Board meeting and then the next available Board, board of Commissioner meeting. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any additional questions for the <coughs> for staff? Okay. At this time, we'd like the applicant to come forward. And we'd like you to state <laughs> your name and address for the record. And we'd like to allot 10 minutes to uh, any presentations or any addition that you have. Thank you all. Can you hear me? My name is Adam Price with Falcon Design Consultants. <laughs> Pleased to be here. Thanks, Stacy, for presenting the project. Uh, made my job a lot easier. He went over most of the highlights. Uh, 
what you see up there now is a 3D perspective looking up the main street of the town develop, development. As you can see, the five-story buildings are very similar to what you would see in what has been built in North Atlanta, north of the perimeter. It's very popular on that side of town. It's a very high-end development. And I think it's, uh, it would bring a, a, a breath of fresh air to Henry County for commercial development. And at this time, because we've had one of these meetings before, I know some of you guys were not there back in December. Uh, since then, I know we've added a prominent, excuse me for my pointer, we've added a prominent 2,500 seat amphitheater, which I know the county uh, does not have really an amphitheater right now. So that would be a, a nice amenity for everybody. That's kind of what our planners are calling an entertainment district. We've got residential here on top of commercial, as Stacy spoke of. We've got high-end fashion retail planned here. Up here, this is the frontage of Jodico Road where there will be out parcels, probably restaurants. Up here, we have an organic grocer planned and other retail, possibly a, co a well-known coffee shop. I'm under a non-disclosure agreement, so I can only give so much information about specific tenants. But I will say that uh, my client just got his first major tenant over here, which is an uh, outdoor retailer, very high end. Got them signed up this week. So uh, this project appears to be that it's gonna happen. Uh, I think a lot of the residents I've spoken to seem to be excited about it. I'm a resident as well as a business owner in this county, so uh, I'm excited about it as well. And. Uh, Please to open up the floor to any of your your questions or thoughts. Okay. Does the board have any questions for an applicant? If not, you may be seated, sir. At this time, we'd like to allot 10 minutes for anyone that would like to speak in favor of this case. Uh, my name is J.T. Williams, and I live at 105 Wexford Court in Stockbridge. Uh, I'm the developer of Eagles Landing. Uh, been here about 30 years, and uh, I've uh, been very familiar with uh, the presentation. I have not examined it in detail, but I'm generally familiar with it. I think it'll go really well with that general area. Uh, we've kind of skipped over that exit, uh, the, the exit. Uh, uh, of course, for Jodico Road down to Jonesboro. And uh, I'm also, for about 14 years, I've been uh, chairman of Greta's Committee on Transportation Projects and Planning. And uh, we approved the widening of that bridge based solely on the county's feeling that this would be a major development on this particular quadrant, the southwest quadrant of that interchange. Uh, the bridge has been widened. We thought it would happen a lot faster than this, uh, but we, I do encourage you to approve this. I think it'll be a great addition uh, to Henry County and to the city of Stockbridge and the whole area uh, of, of along I-75 and that. You, you, you really hate to see an area skipped over, but we know that's going from 224 at Eagles Landing to Jonesboro Road, and then this was just skipped. Uh, not anything there now, but this would really help that entire area develop. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak in favor of this case? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm speaking tonight on behalf of Because We Care, Henry Atlanta South as a resident, Elton Alexander. I, um, I live in this area. I live off of, uh, my address is 920 Maple Leaf Drive. McDonough, Georgia. Uh, I live in this area. I live about a mile and a half uh, from this development uh, off, of Jod off of Jodico Road. Um, every day that we preach and that we uh, listen to citizens talk about quality development in their area, we have millions of dollars leaving the community because many of our citizens refuse to accept the offerings that we have put forth. This is a world-class development that I hear every day. I gotta go to Lenox, I gotta go to Cumberland, 
after go to the Mall of Georgia. These services are not available in this community. It is time. We built plenty of roads, plenty of bridges, plenty of improvements for Cobb County because our tax dollars go there, because our citizens want better services. This is an opportunity right here to provide services that we currently don't provide. I was overjoyed to see that we were finally have an opportunity to have a 2,500 seat amphitheater in our area to have attractions at. This is indeed world class. The design of the community that's pushed forth uh, as, as outlined by the Atlanta Regional Commission is for this exact type of development, mixed use, so that we can have all of those components in a walkable, pedestrian friendly community. As Mr. Williams has stated to us, Gerda has already approved this. It's been through all of the processes. The direct regional impact study has been completed. It has been recommended for approval. As you sit there and you um, weigh your decision tonight, I want you to think about the last time you took your spouse or significant other out for dinner for a special occasion and what you had to do. Or the last time you wanted to go buy a nice gift or something uh, very special on a special occasion. Did you indeed have to take your business outside of the county? This development allows you not to be able to do that. It allows you to be able to keep your tax dollars in your community supporting quality. I'm here tonight to talk about quality. This is not the strip malls that we used to see. This is not a family dollar on a corner. This is not another service station. This is best plan. All of the, what we do in the community in terms of planning and zoning is to embrace master plan development. I, I laugh every, I, I laugh and I sometimes I cry when people are talking about how Henry County got into the shape that it's in when you're stuck on traffic and, on a daily basis or you're stuck, you can't move here, you can't go there and uh, with the situations with the lack of infrastructure. What caused that? Lack of planning. This is an opportunity for us to start and plan a master plan development in our community. As Mr. Williams said, there was $13 million spent on a bridge at the Jodico intersection in order to make this project come through. The previous project fell through and sometimes, you know, some things have a way of coming to you. And you know what? That last development could not hold a candle to what we see up there tonight. Tonight, this board has a chance to move forward, moving Henry County forward and bringing our tax dollars home, as well as attracting business from not just Henry County, but all over the region, filling our coffers. Take that opportunity tonight and vote for quality in Henry County. Anyone else would like to speak in favor of the case? Good evening, everybody. I'm Diane Jennings. I'm at 1132 Venetian Lane in Hampton, Georgia. And I'm excited to be here this evening to witness such an event. I think that this development that's coming into this area It'll save me a lot of time, a lot of gas, a lot of money from having to go to Buckhead to get my hair done every other week. It's too far and it costs too much money. We talked about it this morning, the services on this area, uh, on this side of town, they, they don't have because uh, of, of no development. So you have to go further than plan to get other things done. My son, I spoke about this about a month or so ago, my son goes to Oglethorpe University and he's studying to be a doctor. But in his class, they was talking about the developments of the city, the whole metro Atlanta area, and the place for the students not to move back to was to the south, Henry County, uh, Stockbridge, McDonough, Hampton, because it's too, it's too low, it's too slow, there's nothing going on, there's nothing for them to do. 
I want my son to come back home. Now he wants to move to California because, you know, it's a lot happening, a lot going on. Well, I don't want him to leave me yet. So I'm asking you all to look at what's going on around here that's going to be progressive for this city, progressive for this county, progressive for this whole area. Now is not the time to go to sleep. There is too much work to be done. There's too many things that needs to be happening for our, our teenagers and our young adults to, to allow this city and this county to be more progressive. If we sit down now, things are going to die. We shall not die. We should stand and live and go on to carry on the marvelous works that's already ordained for everybody to do in this county. So I implore you, I urge you as the members of the zoning board to stand up and stand up for something that's real and that's precedented in this county and do not allow this project to go to sleep because this is definitely not the time. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak in favor? My name is Paul Leslie. I live at 1721 Highway 1 West, McDonough, Georgia. I'm the pastor of McDonough Christian Church, which is at 25 Mount Olive Road, as well as 2000 Jonesboro Road. And we're, uh, I'm up here to speak in favor of the project because we're, we're excited about the growth of the county. Uh, and I'm excited about what the potential is. But that seamless road, and this is a domino because that seamless road borders our church. And, and I just want to make sure, and if I could tonight, just make a couple of references. First, I don't have to go to Buckhead to get my hair done. I'm glad for that. Uh, but uh, it's an easy task on me. But just referring to the staff report ever so briefly, um, it talks about Road A having a 120-foot right-of-way. And that will help. Hopefully, we'll get a, a traffic signal at Jonesboro Road. Uh, but that 120-foot right-of-way uh, is about 15 feet from the corner of our uh, covered drop-off at our east lobby. And so we're excited, but there's ramifications even in the Greta report. Uh, another document in the staff report, uh, the, the ARCA uh, document, uh, talks about uh, at the build-out there'll be 34,317 new daily trips. There's four directions you can go, and one I'm south, and so the road is a great concern. If you look at table 22, it talks about installing new signals, and it doesn't indicate immediately. It says when warranted, all the way up through 20 and 25. Let's be proactive. Let's let this thing go through, but let's take into consideration the citizens of Henry County. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Moore. At this time, we'd like to allot 10 minutes for anyone that would like to speak in opposition of the case. Good evening, Chairman and the, the board. My name is James Parker. I live at 498 Mount Olive Road. Uh, this is the plan right there. It's not working. Okay, it is working. This is my property right about here where a little triangle is. And uh, here's a more enlarged picture of it. It's right here. If that is going to be like that, if that's going to be the development, they've got driveways on all around my property and condos. So when I come out of my house, all I'm going to see is condos. I'm going to be in the parking lot. So that's a problem for me. Uh, there needs to be some sort of uh, barriers, buffer zone, and because uh, it's going to affect our privacy. I mean, we're just not going to be able to, I don't know, we'll be like trapped in there. I don't know that we'll be able to sell the property. Uh, well, I mean, I know we'll be able to sell the property, but, but as residential property, it might be a problem because nobody's going to want to live there and that close to in a parking lot. So that's pretty much all I have. I just like everybody to know, you know, that that's what we're up against. So thank you. Anyone else would like to speak in opposition? Edward Tony, 894 Upper Wolsey Road. Not really opposed to the project. I am opposed, and, and I've had a lot of contact with the people lately in that district, too. Their concern is, one, is the city of Stockbridge takes it over. They lose all their rights. They lose all their ability to communicate with the Board of Commissioners. So they have a lot of concerns about that. They said that, you know, they could see the development happening if it was done in a, in a way that it was a progressive development. 
And by progressive, they mean by putting um, all the infrastructure in place before we even go to any retail developments. And then, of course, we don't even know what kind of retail developments have actually said that they will locate there. So we're still looking at what could be, we don't know. But anyway, the, the residents I've been speaking with, they're, they're very concerned that District 2 is not being represented by this development. And if the city of Stockbridge takes it over, then we definitely lose all of our ability to, to have any say so in this, in this development at all. So the, the citizens' concerns are one is the infrastructure, which we don't believe that the city of Stockbridge has the infrastructure to support this. Plus the city of McDonough, their water source will be affected by this, this development. So there's a lot of issues that really need to be worked out before this thing could, you know, you could rubber stamp it and say it's ready to go. So with that said, if they've got a, a uh, development agreement in place, or this board has a development agreement in place that says the infrastructure will be completed before any permits are issued for the, um, the retail development. And so that's kind of the way that people are looking for it to happen. And the people of District 2, especially around the Page Creek area, up and around the Jodico area, they're the ones that are gonna be directly affected as he just said earlier, there's 34,000 cars per day, vehicles per day, that's projected for this project. Well, that's kind of a bottleneck right there at Jodico, even, even with that. And even on Sundays when the, the big church over on Mount Carmel lets out, you know, don't uh, roads impossible at that time. So it will, it will impact the whole area. So those really need to be taken into account. The citizens of District 2 need to be taken into account and it shouldn't go to the city of Stockbridge. That's all I have. Thank you. We have six minutes. Does anyone, anyone else like to speak in opposition of the case? Good evening, board. My name is Lou Martin. I live at 132 Cross and Drive, Stockbridge, Georgia. Uh, I come to you tonight uh, with a two-edged sword. Uh, I think the county needs a project like this but I'm concerned, just as the man mentioned, about the infrastructure and the roads, um, especially the, the Mount Olive connection. Uh, I go to church in this area, uh, McDonough Christian Church, uh, which will be heavily affected by the road, and not anyone has approached us about how the road would be structured. We've just taken a look at the uh, the, the drawings and stuff, and we've kind of measured out. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to have a drive-through baptismal uh, to some degree, the way the road is, is cut through there. Um, so uh, with that and what the future plans hold for Jonesboro Road for the extension of four lanes there, uh, I live in this area, I go to church in this area, and I work about three, maybe three miles away from this project. So. I'm looking forward to the project, but I think the planning and zoning needs to have some um, conditions, uh, like the gentleman just said, some of the infrastructure uh, taken uh, into consideration before it's finally approved. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak in opposition? Good evening, board. My name is Daryl Payton. I'm a member of the Mount Olive Baptist Church, also an officer. And uh, we've got some concerns too. Just, oh, 171 Livingston Court, McDonough, Georgia. Uh, we've got some concerns about the increased traffic that's gonna be coming that way. Uh, we've got a uh, outreach center that's right across the street from the church, which is across from the Mount Olive Road, which is going to be effective. And we're concerned about uh, having some crosswalks with maybe a light signal, signal that maybe need to be conditioned in if this is approved. Um, we're also concerned, too, about uh, it not just being developed as a residential and commercial that we may have the uh, condition that the commercial is built out before we start doing the residential, just so that we, you know, do what we say we're going to do. But um, that's about it. We're not, as other gentlemen said, we're not just opposed to uh, having this development. We just want the uh, the homework to be did on it and 
just think about the community and, and the church members. Thank you. We have approximately three minutes. Good evening, board. Good evening. My name is Charles Percacci. I live at 120 Pond Drive in Stockbridge, Georgia. Well, I'm approximately 300 yards away from Mount Olive, and the traffic is horrendous there as it is now. I could not get out of my subdivision the other day. I swear to you, I could not get out of my subdivision. On Mount Olive Road was backed up, car, 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 maybe 30, 40 deep. I couldn't even get out. So I had to go out the front of our, which is at Morgan's Pond, which is uh, right where that uh, pencil is right there. That's where, where we live. And the traffic, is, and I turned left, and finally they let me out on Chambers. I went to uh, Jonesboro Road. The traffic was backed up to Jonesboro Road at the light back up, coming, coming towards um, uh, Mount Olive and, and uh, that area. Uh, we need to do something about infrastructure. It, it is go going to be horrendous if we don't get it done prior to you implementing this, this um, uh, shopping center. I'm all in favor of progress, progress on this uh, site, but I mean, we're talking about a, a ton of more people involved. Uh, you're talking about 600 uh, private residents in this area. Is that correct? Did you hear that? Approximately. Where are we going to put them in schools? Because they're going to have kids, and they have they have to have schools to go to. Pates Creek has got uh, uh, trailers now. Uh, Mount, um, um, Ola's got trailers too. Where can we put all these people? And uh, Section 8 housing. What about Section 8 housing? Sir, if you will, address the board. And, oh, okay. And Section 8 housing is a concern for the citizens. Traffic is number one. Section 8 housing is, is a, a very important to me. Um, has, has there been anything said about what type of buildings are going to be involved here? But I would like the Section 8 housing to be addressed and the 600 residents. Okay, we have 32 seconds. Anyone else would like to speak in opposition of the case? No, that's about the only thing I have uh, uh, in timeline. What timeline do we have here that are that to fruition? Hey, Chuck. Hey, Dan. In the 10 seconds we have left, I, I noticed that you didn't mention anything about Morgan's Pond subdivision. State your name being, and address, sir. My name is Dan Lutz. I'm at 125 Pond Drive in Morgan's Pond. I, I uh, ask for the board to reject this at thank the you. moment, I'm just sorry, for the sir. purpose the that the Stockbridge is, the City. Is, uh, thank you, sir. That the well, can he have 10 minutes separately? No, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Section eight. At this time, we'd like to call the applicant forward, please. At this time, we'd like the applicant to come forward. Does the board have any additional questions for the applicant? You, you listen to their concern. Now, they, they, the church said that nobody has contacted them about how the road would be structured. Would you be willing to meet with them and come to some type of conclusion or whatever? I would have no problem meeting with them, uh, especially come to light the last few weeks, which maybe Dante can elaborate on the funding that has been established for the roadway going from Hudson Bridge all the way to Jonesboro Road. So the funding is in place for the road and it will be built. I mean, I think that answers the traffic question. It just happened in what, the last two to three weeks? Yes. It I, did. Think I'm a, I think I'm allowed to say that, right? You are. And. <laughs> You're actually standing next. It's to not my funding or my clients. It's the government. Henry County got the funding. You're actually standing standing next to uh, one of the project managers on that. Uh, Stacy actually yes. very or very instrumental in that uh, in that. So he could he could speak on that very well. So, Mr. Chairman, let me just say that Henry County's assistant county manager gave a very compelling presentation in the presence of the representatives from the Georgia Department of Transportation. 
Uh, the Georgia Department of Transportation reached out to Henry County. They, they made an offer to cover the construction costs of the, the entire project for the Western Parallel Connector between Jonesboro Road and Hudson Bridge Road. However, this is a partnership and the Georgia Department of Transportation would require Henry County to provide the funding for all of the preliminary phases between scoping and right-of-way acquisition, utility relocation, preliminary engineering, and so forth. So it's not, the funding, just for the record, is not in place. Uh, Henry County, as I understand it, has not identified yet the funding for these preliminary phases, but it's a very generous offer from the state to cover the construction costs for what will amount to be approximately a $45 million project. Okay. Anyone else have questions? I'm, just, I'm, I'm, just, I'm sorry. I just, um, the road is my concern. And um, I was at a, and one of the reasons why, because I was at a function the other day. Um, and the, you couldn't walk across from that down center to the church. You would al almost get hit because of the cars was coming so fast, coming through there, right by the old Mount Olive Church. And I'm just concerned, that, that's a concern of mine. And, and uh, I, I think this needs to be worked out. Uh, I'm, I'm, this is it. Go ahead. Uh, yes, I have a question. I, I, I suppose this would be directed at Stacy now. Uh, uh, I know that there has been, uh, uh, you know, a certain amount of funds that, that that would be available, you know, several million dollars for the, you know, for the parallel, you know, roadway. Uh, of course, at this point, there 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 has not been any, you know, engineering or any, you know, any design at this point. So. I, I think that uh, that uh, that uh, uh, Mr. Head is you know right on about uh, you know that the impact uh, of Mount Olive Road on the uh, on the residents as well as the as, as well as the two churches that are, you know w w would be quite affected. Uh, one thing that I would like to see as part of a development agreement uh, is. Uh, would be the possibility of a, of a uh, you know shifting of Mount Olive Road uh, uh, you know somewhat west of the uh, of its uh, present location just north of the uh, uh, of the McDonough Christian Church you know sh shifting it west towards the westerly property line of the church uh, you know that certainly would uh, would lessen the impact on the uh, east side of the uh, church, and if that's not possible, um, then uh, you know some compensation to the church to provide them with uh, with the with the with the parking that, that would that would be removed. Um, so I would like to see see those things considered in a development agreement, and also in in working with the with the Georgia Department of Transportation. Any additional questions? And I'd like to see that, you know, that, you know, part of any, uh, of any motion that is made, you know, tonight too. For, for the record, Mr. Risher, I just want to make sure that you said you would like to be a part of the development agreement. Is that what you said, sir? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if it pleases the board, it could be a talking point of the development agreement because what it boils down to is that the development agreement will come down to whether it be the city of Stockbridge, city council, their legal representation, and the county attorney coming to an agreement. Um, it can be a talking point, but even if, if the motion tonight is to make it a part of the development agreement, that could very well change. Uh, no, 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 well, no, that's not what I meant, uh, but yes, uh, certainly make it part of the discussion and negotiations you know, for this, for this roadway. I would like to add, there will probably not, in all seriousness, be any Section 8 housing on a 
twenty million dollar piece of property. <laughs> that just to let everybody feel better about that. Okay. Any any additional questions? Okay. Uh, you may be seated, sir. Thank you. All right. At this time, we'd like to uh, call the case. Case number RZ-16-03, estate of Dr. Chen and the marital trust, trustee Yi Chen of McDonald, Georgia, request a rezoning from a county designated designation of RA, residential agriculture, to a city of Stockbridge designation of PTD, planned town development, for property located at 2153 Jodico Road in land lots 77, 78, and 83 of the 6th District. The property consists of 158.65 plus or minus acres, and the request is for a commercial and residential development is located in Commission District 2 and was presented by Mr. Stacy Jordan Rootson. Okay. You've heard the case. Uh, do we have a motion? Yes, I make a motion to approve case number RZ-16-03 with staff, re staff recommendations under the conditions stated. Do we have a second? Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to hear the next case, please. Mr. Chairman, could you, um, what, what was that vote? Was it 4 2? That vote was uh, 4 2, correct. Thank you. Case number RZ-16-04, Fred D. Rickman, Jr. of Columbus, Georgia, requests a rezoning from RA Residential Agricultural to C3 Highway Commercial for property located at 1294 Highway 155 South and land lot 222 of the 7th District. The property consists of 8.03 plus or minus acres, and the request is for a storage facility and is located in Commission District 2 and will be presented by Ms. Adrian Center. Good evening. The property is located at 1294 Highway 155 South, and the applicant is requesting to rezone the property from RA to C3 for the development of a storage facility consisting of two buildings on the five-acre track of land that is depicted as track one on the conceptual site plan. The remaining three acres will be divided into two separate out parcels for future development, sorry, future commercial development. Track two um, is currently has a single family residence and a storage shed and track three has a swimming pool as well as an, another storage shed, storage shed and both of those will all be removed. The proposed change in zoning should not have a negative impact on the character of the existing area. As you can see, it's surrounded by N1, C2, and C3 zoning classifications. The proposed rezoning is consistent with the future land use map, which designates the property for commercial land use. A letter from the Henry County Water and Sewage Authority that stated January 16th of 2016 states that water service is currently available as well as sewer service to the site. In terms of vehicular access to the development and more specifically access to Ferris Drive, the applicant would need to have the roadway core to verify that the pavement section is adequate for the proposed commercial access. If pavement section is sufficient for commercial access, the applicant will have to improve the pavement section of Ferris Drive from their access to State Route 155. Also, the applicant will need to dedicate right away along Ferris Drive along the site's frontage if it is determined that the existing right away width is substandard. With State Route 155 being a future widening candidate, the county's in the county comprehensive transportation plan, Henry County DOT requests that the applicant preserve an additional 10 foot of right of way along the site's frontage. (Laughter) 
Based upon the conceptual site plan, the proposed development is consistent with the regulations of the ULDC for commercial development. Therefore, planning staff has recommended, um, recommended approval with three conditions as shown on the overhead. Um, and I'll be happy to answer any questions at this time. Okay. Does the board have any questions for staff? If not, we'd like the applicant to come forward, please. Please state your name and address for the record. Good evening. My name is William Daw here. I live at 7358 Winding Ridge Road in Columbus, Georgia. Okay. Do you, would you like to add anything to staff comments? We are very happy to comply with all the conditions, and we have no comments related to those at the time. We agree with all they said. Does the board have any questions for the applicant? If not, you may be seated, sir. At this time, we'd like to allot 10 minutes for anyone that would like to speak in favor of the case. No one's coming up. We'd like to allot 10 minutes for anyone that would like to speak in opposition of the case. Will the applicant come forward, please? Does the board have any additional questions for the applicant? You may be seated, sir. We'd like to call the case, Dante. Case number RZ-16-04, Fred D. Rickman, Jr. of Columbus, Georgia, requests a rezoning from RA, Residential Agricultural, to C3 Highway Commercial for the property located at 1294 Highway 155 South in Landlot 222 of the 7th District. The property consists of 8.03 plus or minus acres, and the request is for a storage facility and is located in Commission District 2 and was presented by Ms. Adrian Center. Okay, you've heard the case. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve case number RZ-16-04 with staff recommendations under the conditions listed. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? I have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Motion carries. Okay. We'd like to move to case number six. Case number RZ-16-05. So, so Wandi Dinesh Guru of Stockbridge, Georgia, requests a rezoning from C1 Neighborhood Commercial to C2 General Commercial for a property located at 4475 Walt Stevens Road in land lot 27 of the 12th District. The property consists of 0 0.74 plus or minus acres and the request is for a U-Haul rental facility and is located in Commission District 5 and will be presented by Ms. Josephine Medina. Good evening. The case uh, which I'm presenting, the applicant requesting for rezoning from C1 to C2. Uh, the purpose of the request is for a U-Haul rental and parking. Uh, the property is located on the northwestern uh, corner of Walt Stevens and Flippin Road. Um, this is a site plan of the current property. Um, no modifications have been proposed. Um, and as you can see, there are two easements um, on the property, to one in the entrance of Flippin Road and one on Walt Stevens Road. Currently on the property, there is a gas station and an admissions business. Um, and the, the request is to add to these business a uh, rental and rental for trucks uh, and to be able to store U-Haul trucks. Um, so as you can see, the location is actually um, within a small commercial uh, node. To it was rezoned in 1992 as part of of a planned development, um, and it was so. To the north um, is a daycare, which is C1, um, and to the west is a shopping center, which were also part of that planned development. Um, and, as you, and to the south across uh, Walt Stevens is a, a BB gas station. Um, and then to just diagonal of that, there currently isn't any uh, development, but it is also zoned 
C1. As far as the future land use, um, it is designated as medium density residential. Um, and this is inconsistent with what is currently being proposed, um, but it is also inconsistent uh, with, with what it is currently zoned, um, as well as pretty much the whole intersection node um, is inconsistent with um, the medium residential as they are currently um, C1. Um, and this is just an image to show what the surrounding property is. Um, as you can see, the first is view to north, which is the actual subject property. Uh, the view to the south, which is kind of dark, but that is the location of the VP. Um, and then view to the west, which is the shopping center. And then view to the east um, is a RA parcel, which has not been um, developed. Due to the primary um, nature of residential surrounding the property, uh, as well as what the future land use map calls, um, staff has recommended for denial of the C1, uh, sorry, of the C2 request, um, but has made recommendation if the board wishes to recommend uh, approval of the C2 uses, um, which includes um, a plan um, where the U-Hauls would actually be parked. Um, also, it would limit the use to only um, the CTU, C2 use of rental and um, of equipment and trucks. Um, and I can answer any questions the board may have. Okay. Just being at this point, is there a uh, parking requirement for uh, that facility? Is there uh, a yes. Okay. So right now, as it stands, it, it just requires for, um, I believe it was uh, five parkings. Or yeah, it currently just would require five parking spaces um, based on the gasoline station and the emissions. OK, and how many parking spaces does it have now? It has uh, it has five currently that are striped, okay. um, as as the plan says. I, I went out there and I saw three more, um, but it wasn't indicated on the plan itself. But I did see three more that were striped, so it was a total of eight and one handicap space. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't have anything else. <clears throat> How many, uh, how many trucks is the applicant uh, asking for to park here? Um, I guess that would probably be better answer. All right, for I'll just uh, save that for them. Okay. <laughs> it's on you, Mr. Richard. Mm -hmm. Take that. There we go. All right, I'd like to ask that the applicant come forward. And please state your name and address for the record. Sewandi uh, Guruge. I live in uh, 210 Farmbrook Park, Westock Bridge, Georgia. Okay. Uh, okay. Do you have anything that you would like to add to the staff's comments? Yes. Uh, the U-Haul business is uh, a part of that we do with the emissions, and uh, it's additional income for us because we have three people working for us and we don't get emissions all the time. That's why we added it. But we have been having this business for about three and a half years now. It was last year that the county wanted us to get a separate license to have U-Haul trucks rental in our premises. And then only I came and then only I found out that it was not properly sown and that's when we started the process. So we have a pretty good clientele, as you said, like you see, there's a lot of subdivisions in the area and we have four and a half out of five stars, we, which we always 
maintain, and we try to provide a better customer service for them. And it's a convenient for the community as well because you know you all charge by the miles. So when for somebody to buy something from Walmart down the street to bring it over, it's just going to take about five miles for them. But if you have to go further, that's what a lot of customers tell us. So I would ask uh, if you all consider our request and with the conditions that we can always meet those conditions. And asking for, I mean, uh, answering your question, uh, we have about four trucks which is one pickup truck and one cargo van mm -hmm. and a 15-foot truck and a 17-foot truck, which we don't have it all the time. Uh, where on the property would these, uh, would these trucks be, be parked? It, it's parked on the... Uh, the lines are not marked on the plan, but there is a parking spot on towards the flipping road right there right uh, yeah right where there there's like four spots for the uh there we park uh three vehicles the van cargo van the pickup truck and a 15 foot truck over there and we park one in the back but it doesn't have a parking space but there is a lot of space so we park there which is what we do is we just block that in the night because there had been two, three breaking in, so we just park it blocking that road over there, roadway. Does the board have any any more questions for the applicant? All, all right, uh, sir, you can be seated. Thank you, sir. At this time, we will allow 10 minutes for those who would like to speak in favor of the case. Okay, does anybody want to speak in favor of the case? All right, at, at this time we are allowing 10 minutes for those who want to speak in opposition to the case. All right, all right, can the applicant come back up? And does the board have any, any further questions for the applicant? There are, are no questions, sir. Sir, you can be seated again. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Well, uh, staff, please call the case. Case number RZ-16-05, Savandi Gurugay. Please forgive me for if I, if I mispronounce your name. Uh, of Stockbridge, Georgia, request a rezoning from C1 Neighborhood Commercial to C2 General Commercial for a property located at 4475 Walt Stevens Road in Landlot 27 of the 12th District. The property consists of 0 0.74 plus or minus acres, and the request is for a U-Haul rental facility and is located in Commission District 5 and was presented by Ms. Josephine Medina. All right, do we have a motion? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to follow staff recommendation Recommendation to deny. Do we have a second? A second. All right, any further discussion? All right, we'll call for the vote. Okay. Okay, the, okay, the, uh, the request has been denied. Okay, that concludes our meeting for tonight. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I'm so moved. Second. It's been adjourned. Thank you.